Hello again, my friends, and today I, well, actually won't be building, but showing you how I painted this Trumpeter 172nd scale German KV2. And as you can see, it comes with very limited amount of sprues and parts, and as when you're about to see the instructions, which are of course are very simplified, especially with it coming from Trumpeter, as which is why I really enjoy their straightforward and easy to understand kits for such as a beginner such as myself. I, especially since the overall build was very simple and you know just the usual of filling up gaps and sanding some parts to help uh, make it more even a little bit detailed as you will see. But now let's prime it with this AK black primer with their third generation acrylic colors which is very nice for applying on straight out of the bottle. Sometimes if it is a huge large surface I recommend adding in one or two drops of paint to or of water to seven drops paint to help make it nice flow even and reduce the risk of it uh, drying as you apply it with the brush. Now let's begin to brush paint on this Dunkel Grau, which is just dark gray for the uh, early war German colors, which is a very nice, almost tinted bluish color that you might see there, as we will push that effect later on in the video, as you will see. But since this is a model air uh, color, which is a paint that is ready for an airbrush, but it is also very nice for just mixing in with one drop of water and of course the seven drops of paint to easily apply it on the model, which you can see it is very nice and smooth once applied on. And even sometimes it comes in a nice satin finish. And now let's paint it with the white gray, which is a very nice off-white color for the winter whitewash, as you will see as we build up the effects with the sponge and as well as thinning it down into the consistency of a wash as we build it up in many thin layers and getting the nice desire without a the use of a chipping varnish as you are probably uh, accustomed to to seeing uh, how most people do it but this is can be very helpful for those of you who don't own a chipping varnish but Let's see how I build it up over time and as with the patience and some uh, possible mistakes later on. Now I can begin to apply my own homemade Tamiya uh, dark brown wash, which is of course just made with flat brown and flat black to help give it a nice outline of details on certain parts of the model. And as you can see with the help of the soap, which will very nicely help reach the deep crevices and corners around the details of the model. And even at times toward I can remove it with just a cotton bud and water.
I use flat brown to help create some certain sort of rusty stains or any other kind of stain that you can probably think of, maybe some fuel stains or other possible mud. But here, I just want to make it seem like it has seen some wear and use over time, especially since I think it looks very nice. This is probably my only, well, one of my few uh, Colors of War paints that I own that I purchased a Colors of War paint set a while ago for uh, the British. And of course, I use it for a nice sort of uh, cloth color or even just for a tarp, as you can see there, which is a nice medium beige brown, as I even said, battle dress brown. It says it's very nice for certain pieces of clothing as obviously being used for here. But now I can begin using the chipping, which is just the original Donko Grau color, which is very nice for just adding in little scratches and chips and one-off paint. As it's up to you if you want this to be a brand new, fresh uh, winter whitewash camo. But for mine, I want to make it seem like it has seen some action and very heavy wear and tear and use. But uh, you can even add in some little bit of white to give it a nice tank track color, as you can see there. But it's entirely up to you. But I would eventually will add different colors, like maybe a more bluish tone, as an artistic style of my choice. this Vejo uh, Rust uh, Light Wash, which is very nice for applying on the exhausts, as you can see there, or maybe applying on any fuel stains or spills, like from the jerry cans, or as well as around the fuel cap on the front of the tank. As you will see, I will apply some around the rims of it later on. For the road wheels that come onto contact with the ground, I use Model Air Silver to help 
pins on the lower road wheels, of course, because the upper three uh, return rollers are just made out of rubber, but as well as the uh, idler wheel and the sprocket. But probably some of this won't be seen as much later on because of the amount of mud and the amount of dirt we will apply on in the many layers. And of course, to uh, finally polish it off with a graphite pencil. Now I can begin to mix together German Grey and Sky Blue to make a nice sort of artistic style light bluish grey. As you will see that in real life, of course, this is just a dark grey color and it wouldn't show off any blue. But as my choice, I want to give it a nice blue tone feeling as not just raw steel but just the chipping of the camouflage color as it is very nice and appealing. Uh, to my eye at least but as it is of course important to uh, satisfy yourself with the model first rather than someone else and of course I mix it in to make it a little bit darker with a dark Prussian blue color which were very nice uh, at least hopefully give it a nice look of uh, chipping around certain parts of the model and of course I don't you know use a super thin detailed brush but just in random variations that you can use it with a sponge or just an old frazzled uh, paintbrush that you can see there in random sections and areas to where it may have worn off as it is just a winter whitewash and not a very thick uh, heavy paint primer that they would have used. But it is of course and up to you if you want it to be this random in the chipping variation. white from Vejo to create some either uh, light scratches on the whitewash or actually right here to use it as a highlight in between the dirt and grime that has built up below the turret and the lower parts of it and as was well the of course the streaks and uh, I probably should have done this before adding the chipping and the streak and grime but it's, it's still up to you but just one of my little mistakes right there. And of course, I will paint on the German Balkan cruise later on, as you will see, just with black and white. Of course, with it not being perfect, but there's always a toothpick there to help make it a little bit more straight and even, uh, even with my terrible brush painting skills of little details.
As you can see, I have already weathered the lower side, uh, left side of the hull, and I will show you how I begun the weathering process of this with this humongous tub of fast and final spackle, which is just acrylic white putty filling in gaps and little holes onto your walls. But of course, it is very helpful on this hobby for creating texture and I would say some very nice built up thick mud as. I am planned for this uh, KV2 to be going through very soft, muddy terrain. And of course, you can just apply it on with a brush or maybe with a certain tool, or maybe like a sculpting tool, to help apply it on into little bits and layers into your desired liking of the amount of mud that you would want on your model. And of course, this can even be thinned down with a little bit of water, and as well as having a drying time of just half an hour. Which is plenty of time to work with and as was well you can see here very nice 170 second scale snow uh, this may cost more as in you know maybe eight to twelve dollars here in the u.s but you get a very large amount that will practically save you a lot of time and money and of course giving you a large quantity in this humongous bucket of uh, white acrylic putty other than just buying, you know, other products, which I'm sure are great, but may cost you even more over time. Now I can mix together German Grey and Flat Earth along with the Sky Grey to make it a nice sort of dark, uh, desaturated uh, Russian Earth, which will be very nice in the beginning stages of giving us a base color for the weathered tracks and of course the mud. Now, of course, I begin to add on or actually speckle on the random variations of a dark earth color, maybe more grayish or may, maybe more with German gray, as was, well of course, uh, the sky gray, to make it nice variation tones of the random mud splatter that would have built up on the lower hull of the tank. And of course, you can just continue to add this on, but not too much, but in a relatively fair amount as to what you may think that you're, what you're, you're possibly what you think could have gone through. But it's still entirely up to you on what the colors and you know, what you think your tank setting is going to be overall. But of course, this is tank is going through a nice winter setting, which will be a lot of mud and of course a lot of wet mud, as you will see later on.
for the rubber trucks, I use a, the roughest sanding stick that I have for a very nice, uh, good surface for the super glue that we're going to use to grip on because it'll help uh, keep the tension tight and strong with this Loctite super glue as we apply it on and you can even use your clamps or use your two fingers to make sure it'll hold in place and probably give it uh, an hour or, or maybe just half an hour if you want to be fast with the amount of time that it takes just for super glue to dry and of course it should hold strong and with it being rubber uh, you can still struggle to apply it on of course on the lower running gear of course it's, it's it's not always going to be perfect especially with it being from trumpeter and you, what you might ask is it why are the tracks uh, are painted brown it's because i tried some enamel i know some enamel color to help at least give me a good base for when weathering on the tracks for when i painted of course but that ended up still tearing off and leaving some marks on the lower hull that I did not want for my tank. But of course, I would always recommend that you would leave the tracks unpainted and then super glue them and then apply them on for later. And as you can see, I mix in my Tamiya paste with that acrylic white, white paste that you saw me use earlier, mixed in with the flat earth and of course the other previous paints that you saw me use to weather them. I'd also like to note that I have recently created a Patreon page under the name of Modkits, of course, the same name as my YouTube channel and my Instagram, if you didn't know. And of course, it comes with exclusive photos of my very old work, some future work uh, that you may want to get a sneak peek of, some behind the scenes, or any questions and answers that you may want to ask me. And of course, Thank you all so much for watching as I really hope you enjoyed the video and of course this KV2 model. I uh, will hopefully be seeing you all next time and here is the finished result of the model.